so the, the medium I'm using is basically just turpentine with a bit of oil and uh, it's like a licorice varnish, or like tamar varnish. Um, just because uh, since we, we're using cardboard to paint, um, it's very absorbent, so having a bit of oil will kind of uh, make sure that they, uh, the, the, the colors remain like very vibrant and like luminous. Shall I make some colors? Oh, cool. so I never do it, but should I pretend that I do it usually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing you always want to do is prepare your colors beforehand. <coughs> always. Uh, so the, the, the kind of palette that I'm using is pretty straightforward, um, except for the addition of like a few kind of fancy colors. Uh, so I'm using some uh, green and purple um, and otherwise uh, three different kinds of yellow but mostly two like one um, uh, yellow ochre and uh, uh, what is it a kind of permanent yellow and uh, some kind of magenta red and uh, a cadmium red. So the point of the exercise is not so much to um, focus too much on the likeness um, it's not like a regular portrait that we normally do. It's more about just the fact of trying to loosen up the hands and trying like different kind of like techniques and approaches to um, to become like more efficient at handling paint. So usually, even if I'm doing like the the kind of preparatory drawing, like the end of painting, I like to start using more vibrant colors from the very beginning uh, because like using wamba is like a, it's a very neutral color and. Um, if you use like very kind of like gray colors at the beginning, it tends to, to kill the, the chroma like. So the, the colors in the original um, uh, picture are not particularly interesting. Um, so like I'm gonna keep it like very open at the beginning because I might have to change like the color of the background, the color of the suit. So, like, um, one thing that I would like, guys, um, I would like you guys to sort of um, get more familiar with is the idea of like building up uh, different layers. So, the, the things that I'm going to do today, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do uh, the the next session. So that it's not just about like a la prima painting and trying to get directly to the colors that you want. It's more about kind of like building up values with transparencies, um, different textures, and all that. So unlike um, the way you usually work, um, I'm, I'm go going to sort of like keep on sort of um, defining the drawing all throughout the process. So I'm not drawing first and then adding the colors. Um, I'm going to start adding some um, some lighter tones for the like the main kind of like skin color. And while doing this, I'll still be like kind of refining the drawing like constantly, basically. Usually, like I like cold colors. That's like that's just kind of like a, the tendency that I have use like very cool temperatures. Um, but the point is that even with temperatures, there's so much that you can do with glazing. 
that's like more interesting than trying to, to go for like the, the real temperatures I want. So like if I feel at the end that it's just too kind of bluish, I can always like glaze on top of it with like some nice sort of transparent layers and stuff. So like all of this very kind of like loose brushwork uh, that feels and looks like really random and arbitrary, it's actually kind of useful because like um, by having all of this kind of like very like I like to call it like kind of noise all around the the, the light shapes. Uh, will give you like a few kind of free transitions because basically when you paint then you don't have to actually kind of like go like right next to the, the the contour line that you have you can use a lot of all that kind of all of those textures to get like a few uh, free transitions so the white i'm using is um, actually a mixture of uh, lead white and titanium white um, because like titanium white gives it like more kind of solidity and it's like a it's a brighter white basically it's called as well and the, uh, the lead white gives it like a very uh, nice kind of buttery texture. The, the thing is like if you're gonna use both lead white and titanium white, you should make sure- <laughs> You didn't put the finger in the lead white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should not touch the pigment directly with the, with the skin. That's the first thing. <laughs> the second <laughs> thing is- <laughs> You can get out of this. No. Uh, <laughs> the second thing is like, it's better to use it in the older uh, lead white first and then titanium white than the other way around, because uh, titanium white dries uh, much more slowly. So, yeah. I'm gonna try as much as possible to avoid like the kind of like average, uh, like run of the mill sort of uh, skin tone. We're gonna try to make it a bit more interesting. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna mix some like kind of very light uh, green for like the main light. It's going to look a bit funny, but we're going to try to make it fun. The idea being to kind of like, uh, how shall I say, run counter to some of the, the expectations that we normally have when we look at a face. So like we think, you know, it's a skin color, so it has to be some kind of like pinkish um, color. But actually you could, the, like depending on the, the, the palette you're using, you could, you could make it work with like pretty much any color as long as the, the, the relation between all of the colors work. <coughs> so like for me, the, like this kind of painting is kind of like uh, int uh, intentionally uh, random in some sense. Like for example, I, I like to sometimes make sort of like color notes that don't really seem to make sense at the beginning and they don't even make sense like to me but I'm trying while I'm painting to make sense of them, if that makes any sense. <laughs> no, for like for example, like the, the normal kind of, um, like if I, if I were to, to like follow my, my hunch, I would go for like a, a pinkish note on the nose because there's like more blood here, it's usually like more reddish. Uh, but instead I'm going for like a greenish kind of, kind of hue. And like I hope that by having some like uh, more reddish tones around it, um, it will create like a nice kind of um, vibration. But this, this will make the painting less predictable, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both for the viewer, but also for myself while yeah. I'm painting. I'm like constantly trying to challenge myself by doing things which are a little bit sort of counterintuitive. Uh, one, um, I would say, like good habit to get into. Uh, is to kind of like, it's something that I, I learned pretty early on, is to always try to like mix up new colors rather than like mix like huge quantities for like each tone that you need. I like to always kind of like, if I need like um, um, like the, the same color at like a little point in the painting, I'll try to mix up like a new like similar tone instead of ex uh, like using exactly the same one. Like it just kind of uh, creates more variety.
So I'm obviously using a very cool uh, OX right now. Um, I might start using one more colors today, but otherwise, probably for the next session. So like the, like in traditional, say for example, Renaissance painting, it was really usual to start a painting very cold, and then you would slowly kind of build up the, the warmth. Um, because like doing the, you could, you could do it the other way around, but there's just something like more natural about starting with like bluish greenish uh, um, tinges and then adding like some reds on top on top of them uh, because it's almost like the, the way that naturally the, the skin looks like you've got like all the, the veins and the like you know like under the skin and then on top of that the, the, they're like the, the blood vessels so that somehow there's something about the transparency like doing the, the, the bluish uh, tones first and then adding the, the warmer tones there's something about this kind of combination in this order that makes it look like skin like very naturally. The thing about like if, if you're doing like this kind of like very loose, um, uh, like creative, so to say, uh, um, paintings, is like the more sessions you do, the more kind of um, like stale it, it tends to become. You want to keep the, the kind of the freshness of like the, the first layers. So maybe three sessions might be enough. Uh, like usually, uh, what I would normally do is like two or three sessions. And then I would keep like an, um, a last session for the, the glazing, because I like to glaze on top of like almost finished paintings. So you say about big four going to big low? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I don't want to be drawing too much. So like everything that I'm doing, I'm trying to think of it as just kind of like um, rearranging planes, like rather than like drawing lines. Um, so for example, instead of like actually drawing the, the contour of the mouth, like of the, the lips, I'd rather go for like the plane underneath that will give like more structure to the, to the chin and jaw. For the sake of like making it more interesting, I like to think in a like non-symmetrical way, uh, particularly with the use of colors. That means like the, the normal tendency would be to, to be like, okay, so I'm 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 kind of mixing up some sort of generic, like dark reddish tone for like the the eye sockets on the the right eye, for example. Like the normal kind of uh, tendency would be to kind of like go for the same color, maybe just a tiny bit lighter on the other side. But I think that if you go for like more interesting color combinations, you can sort of like break up this sort of very rigid sy uh, symmetry and still make it work. Um, so like I'm missing like a, a different tone for the other eye socket. Darker tone for the for the nose. Um, it's a bit too predictably red. I'll try to find some cooler notes in this. So when I paint, I always try to um, remain open to the possibility that there'll be parts of the painting that don't actually need to be painted. In the sense, like um, I like to keep like everything open in terms of options, like the options that, that I have. Um, and like if something already I feel like is really working at this early stage, I won't feel the compulsion to kind of like go over it again, like the, the during the next sessions and paint it again. If it works now, then I can just keep it. And it, it makes for like a more interesting uh, final result because like you can see like all the different la uh, layers sort of combining in like interesting ways. 
Um, so sometimes it's like I'll keep like one part of the painting. It, it might be like the shadow or like the small detail that was like like the, the almost like the first brush stroke that I made. So I'm doing something that you're not really supposed to do theoretically, which is like using the same brush for like all of my pictures. So everything gets like very kind of muddy and dirty. But I do this for two reasons. The first one is that I'm I'm really lazy. The second one is like by kind of keeping like all of this sort of always, like everything is kind of mixing, like all the colors are mixing like uh, with one another. And because at this early stage I'm using like slightly kind of unusual colors by making sure that everything is like very sort of um, like um, uh, connected, like everything is kind of like mixing together. Um, that like it, it would look very kind of kitchen and corny if I was like, it, um, if I were to keep like all of those colors like very separate and very clean, like it would start to look kind of kind of cheesy. So using like a, a dirty brush is actually a good thing for like this early stage. So I don't want to leave the, the background completely unresolved for now. Um, and all of this is like very, um, very liquid, very thin, very thinly applied. So I'm going to try to do something a bit more interesting with the background. So the, the photograph is not much help because it's basically just like an average, um, like a black color. Um, usually when I paint backgrounds, if I know that I'm gonna do like a few sessions on the same painting, I like to go for um, a color that's completely the opposite of what I want, like ultimately, just for the sake of like creating more vibrations when I sort of like, uh, like dry brush over it or like glaze over it. So ultimately, I'm gonna do it kind of like in bluish tones, just because I like blue, and then on top of it probably I can go with like some interesting oranges and stuff. But for now I'm gonna keep it kind of blue. When I paint the background, I always try to find like um, some ways to connect the what I'm doing on, on the the face and the background. So like wherever I can get like some um, 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 what do you call them like like open edges, then I'll try to like um, keep like a few sort of like passages open. So like going directly like from the hair from the hair into the background. like the idea, like without wanting to, to get like too sort of metaphysical or anything, uh, the idea that like painting can sort of like mess up your like perception of what is inside and what is outside, by which I mean that like for example, I can use the same value uh, both as a kind of like um, a, a positive kind of statement and a negative statement. So like the same brush stroke can um, signify the shadow on the, on the hair while at the same time sort of uh, describing negatively the, the, the shape of the hair like in the background. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of keeping up the painting by adding like some much darker tones right now. Yeah, I'm just basically using like um, smaller brushes now because I've kind of like covered like most of the the panel, um, and I'm using like a um, kind of like a flat brush, which is kind of like a drawing brush. I'm not actually drawing lines with it, 
but like the way you apply um, paint with this, it's like you get like a very sort of a, like a sharp sort of brush stroke, um, which is very good like for describing planes. So the way I'm using temperatures for, for these portraits might look kind of random and arbitrary, but actually like there's at least like a basic kind of principle that I follow is that like when the like forms are turning away from the light, they're going to be like more sort of bluish or, or greenish, um, which is, that's like a very sort of basic principle, but I don't always kind of like, I don't f follow it rigidly uh, because like I like also sometimes to kind of go for sort of like the opposite effect where you go for like very cool highlights that give us some kind of like very nice sort of translucent quality to, to the skin. Uh, so, so that's another thing that you can do. Having like those sort of like pinkish tone around like a very cold light can make it work as well. But basically whenever like something, some kind of effect is becoming too predictable, I think it's, 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 a, good, um, it's a good idea, it's a good option to kind of like try to go like against this to kind of like break up the, like the predictability of the painting. Now, I knew I have uh, some sort of like deeply ingrained tendency to be a bit too self sort of like indulgent or like a bit too complacent. Um, like when I see like some kind of cool effects, I, I really like to sort of like, I want to keep them like, you know, uh, forever. So like if I kind of stop at a point where I'm not really satisfied, the, the kind of frustration that I get from a painting actually sort of like pushes me to like the next day to like work on it harder and like actually keep going. So I don't know whether I'll need like the an entire hour. Probably I'll stop a bit before one o'clock. Um, I'm just going to paint the shirt a little bit, just for the sake of covering the, the rest of the panel. With the shirt, I have basically like two simple options. I can either go for like a pretty dark color and uh, try to uni unify it with the, the background, which is you know, what the, the photo is like anyhow. Or uh, like that would sort of like bring the, all of the focus on, onto the face. But otherwise, I can try to find like a more interesting color to create some kind of vibration between the background and the, the blouse. Um, but I'm not sure what color to go for. I don't want to use any reds, um, just because I think like having all of the reds on the face um, is like it's, it's more interesting. But like having too much of a uh, having like two similar tones on the face and the shirt would be kind of a bit boring and I think it would take away a little bit from the, like the, it would distract a little bit from the, the main focus. So I have to find something a bit less conspicuous. I can go for some kind of like pretty neutral grayish yellow and see how that works. So like generally speaking, there are lots of um, sort of drawing issues at, at, at this early stage. But that's not a bad thing because everything is sort of like within this 
say two, three millimeters of oxygen of error. And uh, like, I, 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 I wouldn't try to like fix those mistakes now. I'd rather do it once it's dry and I, could, I can go like on, uh, get on top of it and uh, rectify the drawing. Um, so like I, I could refine the, the design of the, of the lips right now, but I think it would be like a better idea to do it with um, uh, dry paint. One thing that I'm not doing so much now, um, but that I would normally do uh, much more, is um, just looking at the painting more. Like, I think I probably use like, I spend like 50% of the time painting and the other 50% just looking at the painting, trying to kind of like mentally solve problems um, with that painting. Uh, right now I'm doing like everything kind of like, I'm, I'm painting much more than I'm actually thinking or looking. So I like to exaggerate sometimes, like particularly for some, someone who has like such a, uh, like a, a nicely kind of, um, what shall I say, like, like such a strong like um, um, structure, like, um, like everything is very well defined on her face, like the, uh, the, the jaw, the, the, the cheeks, everything. Um, so like sometimes for like, like this uh, type of, um, of uh, physiognomy, I like to sort of exaggerate sometimes the difference in value between like the, the main sort of light plane on the forehead and the side uh, one, like the, this kind of like, like this kind of like a sort of a round shape here and then like a, a half tone, uh, which is kind of visible here. So I like sometimes to sort of emphasize the difference between like this side and this plane. Um, it's a good way of like unifying the light on the rest of the, like on the left side of the forehead. Like since the beginning, I've been using now uh, a total of four brushes, I think. But actually, I mean, you might think that I'm, I'm sort of trying to mm -hmm. like ascribe one specific color to the, like each of them, but they're all the same kind of magic color. Mm -hmm. Like um, everything is kind of like getting uh, mixed together. It's just the size. It's just the size of the brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then usually for like the the, the later stages, I always start kind of like like being a bit more careful about the the, the, the brushes that I use. Um, but for now, like I'm just sort of like moving paint around on uh, on the panel. So the, the, the thing about accents, um, whether they be uh, dark accents or, or lighter accents, is that it's very easy to kind of get get carried away because the accents are kind of cool. Like they, they can give you like that extra kind of uh, they they basically expand the, the the value scale that you were working with until you put them. So like they give this sort of like extra kind of like um, kind of what shall I say a boost to, to to the painting. So like it can be very tempting to like use like a shit lot of them and like start going all over the painting and adding lots of accents. But the whole point about accents is like they can only only be accents compared to like the values which are a little bit uh, lighter. So like if you keep adding accents like all over the place, then they'll stop like being considered as accents, they would just be like a darker value. So you have to be kind of um, very uh, selective about where you want to actually have some accents. Um, so for example, I don't think I need to go that dark on this side. It doesn't really help the sense of depth. 
if anything, it kind of like it sort of like um, breaks the sense of unity between the some of the darker values on that side and and the background. So this I'm going to make a bit lighter. Um, but for the sake of sort of um, um, emphasizing the, um, the the shape, the overall shape of the head, the contour, I can have like some darker notes on the background, which will in a negative way sort of like describe the uh, the hairline. So instead of like painting the light on the hair, I'd rather sort of like describe the the actual contour by using uh, the background. But again, the, the whole point of like working in this way, by always thinking about all the, the later stages, like from the very beginning, is that like this involves a lot of frustration because you know that there are certain things that you, you might be burning to do like right now, but you know you have to sort of like, you know, uh, slow down and um, uh, like sometimes it's not the, the, the best decision like to, to go uh, straight away for the, the things which are not working. Sometimes like it's better to wait for the, the next session Uh, one thing that I do quite often, uh, pretty much at any stage of a painting, is like when I mix colors, um, sometimes I'll go for like what you, you, you might call incomplete mixes, like in, in, incomplete mixtures, which is basically like having already like two uh, mixtures and then sort of like very sloppily mixing them together, but not perfectly, so that the, 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 the brush stroke itself has already like th this kind of vibration, um, instead of going for like a perfectly mixed, like unified color. So like I had some uh, some green and some pink, and because I really like this combination, I'm just like roughly sort of taking a little bit of both. I like to keep the the, the first session like very very loose, very rough. Like I think I'm starting to kind of like break up some of those forms a bit too much for like this early stage. That's normally something I start doing um, like during the second session. It's okay. Um, so basically, like if you start with something something that's very uh, rough, but also like usually very unified because you're using like less colors, like fewer colors, and you're sort of like always um, working on the same thing, so like going in, in, in circles, as it were. Um, if you work like this, so like if I had stopped basically like say half an hour ago, um, then uh, when you work on this again, um, it becomes interesting to find like within those very large sort of forms and shapes to find like smaller forms. Um, if you do like what I'm doing now, so like starting to like uh, break up some of those uh, uh, larger planes into like smaller ones, then that means that for like the, the, the next sessions, I have to think a bit more about like unifying uh, the, yeah, unifying the whole picture. So it's a slightly different uh, approach. You can always like at the beginning of a painting, if you have like too much uh, variety, like too, too many variations already in the painting, then that means that for like the, 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 the the next sessions, you have to think more about like unity, how to get the sense of unity within all of these like all of those variations. If, on the other hand, you start with like something very unified, then you might want to make it more interesting. So, like the uh, during the next sessions, I'll be trying to kind of like find this kind of thing, like uh, variations in the, in the colors and the drawing and everything. Now it's kind of like in this sort of slightly awkward middle stage where like it's like it's still more or less unified in the sense that like all of the shadows clearly read as shadows. Like like everything that needs to be a shadow is clearly like a like a value darker than all, all of the rest. But then the colours are a little bit crazy, so like in that sense it's not unified enough. Um, so it's kind of like in this yeah, uh, middle stage. I'm sort of making it like more complicated for myself than it needs to be. Because like I'll have to think both about the unity of the, the colours and temperatures particularly. More, uh, but also about like the the specificity of some of this stuff, which is still like very generic. So yeah, I'm combining like both opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so right now I'm going.
very tempting to add um, a lighter value for like describing and unifying all of this plane. Um, and uh, it's a kind of like a very cool effect to kind of unify the plane of the, the, the cheek with the one like around, like around the bottom of the nose. Um, like uh, when you get like a very frontal kind of kind of light, uh, like on the on the picture, like it's it just it's a super nice effect to have like all of these super unified, and then you keep like the the, the darker half tones like around the, the the cheekbones. It's kind of like a, a a trick as it were, but I think it would be better to do it next time on top of dry paint. So I'm not gonna do it now, but I know that next time I'm gonna try to get like all of this. If you can see on the picture, like all of the plane, sort of like almost from under to like this line, all of this to be unified with all of this. And uh, next time I'll try to do this as like a, almost like a, ideally I would like to have like a single brush stroke, like a very nice buttery brush stroke kind of like, yeah, all of this plane. Yeah. So like if you have a, like in a different light situation, you'd get like a, a slight half turn here. Like because there's a slight change of plane between the, the, the cheeks and, and the spot. Uh, but when you have like a very frontal light, light, for some reason it's just like one of those things. It, it, it looks super nice when you keep it going. It, it's just a trick. Like, like the, the thing I was saying about kind of like exaggerating the difference in value between this and this. Sometimes it's just you get like some really cool uh, effects. It's really nice. Okay. Uh, so the only thing I'm gonna try to do before. Uh, calling it a day will be. I, I really want to. <laughs> it's, it's just horrible. Like everything kind of got like that. Sometimes happen. Like that happens like uh, when you work on a painting, and like I like to work sometimes from like the the, the center and like I work my way outwards. Sometimes I do kind of like the opposite, starting from like the sort of the edges, particularly for like a face like hers, which is like like very again it has like very strong and very clear structure. Um, and when I do this, when I, I start working from the edges toward the center, what o often, if not always, happens is that, like, at some point, like, at a certain part of the of the painting, like around the center, like all of the colors, everything kind of get uh, get sort of mixed up, and you get this very muddy, like very unappealing uh, colors. Because, like, I was using some greens for like some of those half tones on this side. Uh, I was trying to get like a little bit of uh, like more warmth. Because of the like, there's a bit like more um, blood, like <coughs> simply blood, uh, around here, and all of it just sort of like um, got sort of mixed together in a in a very aesthetically like an appealing way. Uh, so I have like three options. I can try to fix it by just sort of keeping on adding more paint. I can uh, scrape off some of the excess paint that I have, or I can just wait for it to dry and then work on this next time. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna use the pipe knife to scrape some of that stuff. So this is the first time today, but I'm hoping that I, I might get like a few interesting accidents by doing so. Oh my God. It's a tiny bit better. Um, basically, if I start using the pipe knife, I will always like make sure that I start using it in different places, like on the same painting. Or otherwise, if I still have to use it, like you know, to, to rectify something that I did wrong, um, then I will sort of like cover up my own tracks, uh, as it were, um, because I think that aesthetically it looks kind of weird if like everything looks like it's like. Um, looks like it's, it's being painted with a, a brush and then there's just like for some reason some random kind of like stroke um, that was done with a, a pine knife. It just looks weird. So either you, either you need to have like um, like lots of little kind of like um, notes done with a pine knife in order to keep like the consistency of the entire painting or if you really need to use a pine knife then I will go over it with, um, with the brushes. Shit. 
you die. So like this little note of um, color doesn't really make any sense, whether anatomically or it just doesn't make any sense. But sometimes you have like those kind of hunches. You do something completely random, and like there's a part of you that knows that maybe later it'll come in handy. So I think it could be useful for like the later stages. So I'm just going to keep this there. Uh, like by sort of dry brushing over it, I can probably get like a free highlight, as it were. I'm just going to mix some, some white because I'm not using the white straight out of, out of the tube. I'm mixing up some uh, lead white and some titanium white. Yeah. yeah, I'm creating my own white as it were. Because I like some of the, the qualities of like both whites. Um, so like lead white is very kind of creamy. It's not as bright as uh, titanium white. It's a little bit warmer. Uh, when mixed with other colors, it tends to give this sort of like slightly milky kind of yeah. tinge to the to the colors and so a little bit more translucent. If if I'm going to use both uh, like separately, then I'll start with uh, that white and then end with titanium white. Oh, uh, when I mix them together, it's just that I have to make sure that every time the, the, the ratio is pretty much the same. Like in, in so the mix like yeah, more or less. But usually a bit more titanium, I guess, but that's just because that white is super expensive. <laughs> There's no like real uh, philosophical reason for this. Oh yeah. This is a good idea. So it's just like the, the, the main sort of um, principle or like philosophy that I like to follow is like whatever there's something that's already working at this stage doesn't mean that you have to preserve it for like the like the entire duration of the painting. But at least to, to be able to recognize that, that some things which, which are working already at this stage is, is a good thing because um, like sometimes it's better to keep things even if they're a bit rough uh, and a little bit sort of like unsophisticated keep some of those things and try to preserve that, that sense of like spontaneity well into the, the, the final stages. It really, it adds a lot in terms of like the, um, it, it makes the, the painting like more interesting uh, at the end, rather than trying to, to like always repaint everything at every stage. Okay, so I'm gonna start the second session on this painting. Um, so everything is now dry. Uh, I actually sanded down the surface just a little bit to kind of get rid of uh, some of the, uh, the the impastors and um, some of the, the accidents that I had uh, from before. So I'm going to start by sort of redrawing just a little bit on top of this with uh, some very liquid paint, just to kind of have a few indications of like a few things that I want to, to change, uh, particularly um, the, the contour of the head, the, the structure of some of the, um, uh, the, the eye sockets, um, the nose, so what I'm going to do is use a pretty uh, small brush. Um, so I kept my medium from before and I just added a little bit of um, oil. So I'm mixing some, uh, some blue, uh, but I don't want it to be too dark. Okay. Um, so for example, looking at the, at the chin, maybe I can uh, sort of redefine some of this. Um, I'll probably end up repainting on top of um, those like um, those um, brush strokes, uh, but the idea for now is just to kind of um, make a few kind of um, uh, a few corrections because the 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 way I painted the first time was very very loose, like kind of moving paint around. And now this time I want to become just a little bit more kind of um, methodical, as it were, and also a little bit more uh, precise. Okay. Um, 
just maybe a few indications of where the like where I want to place kind of the the line separating the the upper lip from the bottom lip. Uh, the point is when I'll paint the the upper lip again, I want to keep it very unified. I don't want to be drawing too much. I'm not using uh, lines so much as I'm using uh, larger masses of um, of value. So um, my plan for today is to kind of um, um, organize a bit better my values and, and, and colors. Um, so because I started in a very sort of um, spontaneous and impressionistic style, uh, now I want to make sure that everything kind of come together um, and um, I will try to unify um, a little bit all of this. Um, but my goal for today is not to actually finish the, the, the painting. Um, what I will be doing in the third and, and probably last session, um, I'll be I'll probably try to glaze over the the whole picture, trying to unify some of the the shadows and the background and the hair, um, trying to to find some nice sort of transparencies um, in some places, and basically working a bit more on the on the light effect. So for today, I, I'm pretty kind of happy with the, the light effect I have. Um, It'll become stronger by s unifying some of those areas, particularly the, the forehead, which is a little bit all over the place, particularly in terms of colors and even some of the brush strokes don't really make sense. It feels very kind of messy. So by unifying some of those places, um, I'll already, hopefully I'll get a, a stronger sense of, um, of unity and a, a better sense of, um, of light. But um, really, if today I can just sort of manage to make all of this a little bit more unified and a little bit um, uh, better organized and more accurate, it'll be enough for, for today. The last session I will be really working on the sense of unity and uh, the, the light effect. I will start by uh, um, painting the nose again. So the, the way I painted the nose the first time um, was very uh, graphic uh, with loads of things that don't really seem to, to make sense, but um, when I was doing them last time, um, I had somehow um, an inkling that, that, that they might um, come in useful later. So I'm going to try to not repaint everything, but keep as, m as much as I can um, uh, some of the things that I did um, uh, last time. So let's try to... structure of the nose. So as I'm repainting the nose, I'm trying to um, also adjust a, a few a few shapes which were a little bit out of place. So for one thing I'm trying to um, make it a little bit thinner overall because it was a little bit on the on the large side. So again, as much as possible, I'm trying not to use lines, but rather um, planes. I'm still thinking about planes a lot. reinforcing the lips. All right, so I already had some kind of highlight uh, from from last time. Um, I'm going to try to sort of keep a little bit of, of that uh, sort of lemon, very like um, acidic yellow uh, and sort of work my, my way around it and then I'll probably have to sort of 
um, going to highlight again, but sort of keeping some of the textures I had from last time. So I will now um, add the, the highlight on top of the on top of the nose. Yeah. I will add just a, a smidgen of blue into my mixtures um, because the highlight I had uh, before was very um, kind of greenish. So I want to find some of the some of those tones again. I think the highlight is just a little bit too strong. Okay, we'll see. Some of the values on, on the nose um, are uh, just a little bit too fragmented, but I'm going to continue nonetheless um, by sort of working on the, the transition from the nose to the to the cheek on this side, and uh, probably later later on I'll, I will go back to the nose. Right, so the. The transition that will be right next to the the side of the nose will have some blue in it, particularly close to the eye, and under the eye, obviously, uh, which is where the, the the skin is very very thin. You get all of those bluish, um, greenish tinges, which are quite nice. So I'm pretty much using the same kind of palette as last time, uh, perhaps exploring a bit more the, the warm um, end of the, the spectrum. The colors I was using last time were all pretty much kind of variations on, uh, on blue and, and uh, green and yellow with only a few, a few pinks. Now I'm, I'm sort of making the whole thing just a little bit uh, warmer in tone, but still keeping like those blues because I think they're very interesting. But mostly, I'm I'm trying to kind of um, uh, confine confine all of the blues to the the, the outer kind of um, uh, the outer forms. So like the, the towards the um, the edges. Um, I'm going to start using um, a slightly larger brush again. So using slightly thicker paint, I will start with a pretty cold uh, skin tone, kind of close to what I had before, and and I'll start using some uh, reds right after that after I'm, I'm done with this. Okay, that's it. That's very light. Okay, so I'll start to use some pinks. Okay, I'm going to start working a little bit on the other side. So the other side will be, generally speaking, just a little bit darker in value. Thank you. 
So I haven't been using the bright light a lot for this uh, painting. I normally use it uh, much more. Uh, but the, the point is, like, whenever I need to use it, I don't see it as a, as a negative thing. I think, um, like, I'm not trying to cancel or, like, somehow um, go back in time by sort of taking away the, the things I had before. I'm using it as a, as a tool, really. Um, Right, pretty good. In fact, I kind of lost a little bit of this, which is kind of nice. I'm kind of a um, I'm not following a very um, um, some kind of plan really. What I'm doing right now is just anything that kind of bothers me. And like when I when I mix a color, I try to see like all of the different places um, in the painting where I could use the same color. Uh, sometimes also in places where it doesn't really seem to make sense for now. But um, I'm just following an intuition that at some point, maybe uh, next time, I'll be able to make sense of some of those um, uh, small accents or notes of color. And mostly it makes sense, I think. Uh, I start kind of trying to find a connection between the air that I barely painted last time and the rest of the face. So. Okay, yes, definitely not very chromatic, so I can find some things somewhere in there. I feel that for now it's probably enough. Uh, I might as well use a slightly similar tone to kind of uh, touch up the uh, the other ear on the opposite side. Okay. Am I going to get too dark? Yeah, it's actually too light. Okay, I think the whole thing is starting to kind of slowly come together uh, a bit more. Um, I still need to work on the, the other cheeks, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, yes. a little bit too pink. Could use a bit more yellow. Something just a little bit less chromatic. Uh, oh, it's still pretty chromatic. Okay, so as I'm sort of uh, working my way, my way towards the um, um, this area between the, the nose and the mouth, I'm using again some uh, more uh, greenish tones.
Pretty good. Sorry. And uh, up there as well, so close to the to the um, eyelids. Mm, that was pretty nice. I think. Let us go down to the to the chin and see what we can do. Yeah. Let's make it just a little bit more red overall. That's too much. That's a bit too much. I think that's probably a little bit too much. to the neck now and uh, um, and paint a, another skin tone on top of what I had which was very impressionistic very kind of chaotic um, I might keep some of those textures because I don't really feel any compulsion to sort of um, bring the entire painting to the same level of, of, of finish um, so like I have no problem about maybe keeping some parts a little bit more sketchy, but still I want to maybe go for a lighter value for the neck. I think it could help. Then maybe add a smidgen of yellow into this mixture. Right, that makes it light and green. Uh, that's a tad bit too chromatic, I think. It's definitely too, too pink. <laughs> right. Okay, that's a bit better. Uh, let us take a, a color for the for the dress, for the collar. Okay. So I'm going to um, start working on the background again a little bit. Because I feel like, particularly on this side, some of the, the the line I have for the contour is just a little bit too sharp. The contrast is a little bit too um, too strong, um, and also because um, when I painted the, the, the background last time, um, I had the, um, I was sort of planning to maybe go over it uh, another time with a different color to sort of create an interesting vibration between uh, this blue. I have it's not just blue. The, I was using some. Uh, some greys and uh, and some of the, the the very first kind of a um, uh, sort of um, the, the very liquid um, layer that I, I had at the beginning. Um, so I'm gonna use a pretty large brush and let's see. Uh, I think I don't want to treat um, uh, these parts and uh, uh, these parts in the same manner. Um, so what I did last time was uh, 
to make this a little bit uh, warmer than, than, than this part. Um, so I can sort of um, kind of work following the same kind of ba basic idea. Uh, but perhaps let's make this a bit lighter before I start. So I'm mixing some raw umber, some uh, cobalt blue. Oh, this is actually even darker. So, yeah. Let's add some reds. Uh, it's very warm. I think it's a little bit too chromatic. So yeah, I will try to grey down just a little bit. So this is much lighter than what I had last time, and um, well, I'll keep some of those darks around the um, the contour. I think it was working pretty pretty well. I think the value is working better now, um, but I need to work on the on some of those transitions. I want to, as much as possible, try to integrate some of the the, um, the shadows, particularly the the one uh, right under the chin into the background, try to find some kind of connection there. So I'm going to warm it up just a touch. Okay. Right. So that edge is still very mm -hmm. sharp. Um, sharper than I would have liked. So that means that I, I have to kind of um, work on that transition again, but using uh, the color I had for the for the skin tone before. Maybe I can try just here. Let's see. Um, just using the same color I was using uh, a minute ago for the background for this shadow as well. The point is I don't want to make uh, those shadows too dark uh, because as I was saying before, uh, next time we will we will be working with um, uh, a lot of um, glazing and that will enable us to, to go a bit darker with uh, some of those uh, half tones. getting there. So, as I'm working on the background, uh, it's also a good time, I think, to work on the hair again, because, um, again, for the same reason, basically I want to find as much uh, of a connection as possible between the, the the dark values on the on the hair and uh, and the background. I'm going to start working on the background on the other side a little bit, so as to be able to redefine the um, the contour of the of the hair. No need to get quite that dark up there. I think this was qu kind of um, atmospheric and was working pretty well already. So I will use a lighter tone, lighter value. Um, this is possibly quite uh, a little bit too dark. Um, I will. I will keep that for now, but um, there's a chance I might sort of go back and, and uh, make those uh, shadows a bit lighter. Okay, so right now I'm just going to work on the transitions between some of the shadows on the uh, near to the edge on the face and the, the background. 
so as to find a, a bit more um, connections wherever possible. Okay, let's uh, have to use a smaller brush. Starting with, maybe we start with this side. A slightly lighter value. Okay. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing, pretty much. use the same tone um, I was not completely happy with that dark accent down there this needed to be a bit darker all right so as I'm doing this I will also um, work on, on this uh, shadow a little bit more and we'll quickly jump to the other side mm. all right uh, so right now this is just very very sharp so I need to use some kind of half turn on this side and try to kind of um, um, just trim this down a little bit I'm going to be using a tiny bit more red, but still a little bit of blue. Um, it's a bit too dark. Mm. Once again, I will go back to this is just too much contrast here. I'm getting a lot of glare from my painting, so it's a little bit hard to um, gauge some of the values. some more greens this is a very neutral color to make it just a bit more interesting uh, since I'm working on this I might as well um, do a few other uh, Changes. Here. How can I bring this? So on the on this cheek, last time I had some some pretty interesting textures that I would like to um, keep to some extent, but I still need to change some of those values. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. Well, I'm afraid to say that I kind of lost <laughs> the thing that I really liked from last time, but uh, well, there's not much I can do about it now, so not completely, but um, yeah, it's a 
a little bit less interesting than it, than it was, I think. It's more unified, but um, I had to sort of sacrifice some of the, the graphic um, brushwork that I had before in order to, uh, I mean, for the sake of enhancing uh, the sense of uh, unity. So I kind of liked some of the, some of the very um, yellowish highlights I had from from before. Um, so I'm trying to use similar um, colors. So it's much more unified. Um, I think this passage is not really working yet. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Hmm. It was just a little bit too light. So I'm using a slightly darker half tone. Oh, it needs to be still darker. And I think um, it's about time to work on the on the forehead again. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna work a little bit on the transition between the the eyebrows, the eyebrows and the and the forehead, so I can paint uh, wet and wet. Okay, so I will go back to using larger brushes, such as uh, this one. So the forehead needs um, to be more unified. And um, I need to make a few um, decisions as to the, the, the color range that I want to use, because right now, like, everything is a little bit all over the place. Uh, there are those, there are lots of... Uh, pinks and yellows and purples and, and greens and it's not really coming together in a, in a very elegant uh, fashion. I always start with a pretty um, basic like uh, uh, skin tone, something a bit warmer than I had last time. Well, so it's very chromatic. Can I make this work? Um, probably, but I think it's just a little bit too, too chromatic, so I will add a little bit of blue. Mm. Okay, so I'm sort of keying up the entire thing. And I'm trying to unify the colors and values at the same time. The colors uh, that will be closer to the, the side of the, 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 the forehead will be just a little bit uh, more blue. Okay, uh, I'm working a little bit on the transitions between the hair and uh, the temples. Mm. As I was saying before, I'm not since I'm not really following any kind of a pre-written uh, uh, plan. Basically, any time I see something that kind of bothers me a little bit. I um, um, I don't mind sort of jumping from one area to, to another, fixing 
uh, things which are sort of unrelated as I go along. So like I felt that this little accent was just a little bit too sharp. So I'm trying to change that now. Not such a great idea in the end, but um, that's all right. We'll keep on working on it. Well, that 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 was actually a pretty bad idea. <coughs> So I will uh, continue working on the forehead a little bit, and then um, before um, calling it an, uh, um, a day for today, um, I just want to make some of those uh, turns a little bit lighter on this side. Uh, I'm not quite feeling the uh, the structure of, of of the of this plane versus the, the plane of the side of the nose. I think some of those transitions are just a little bit too soft um, and probably I could uh, have a slightly sharper uh, edge uh, somewhere here. So let's see, maybe I'll start using my small brush again. to make this half tone too dark. Again, just doing something completely random, but um, I just saw this little um, thing over there and I, I was like, ah, this is just too sharp. Uh, and it's still not really working. Uh, since I'm working on the on this edge, I might as well. Um, Not great. Not too great. Okay, well, I might as well just, um, I'm not going to try to finish it, but uh, uh, just before the end of the session, uh, maybe I could have just uh, a bit more light uh, somewhere in there. I was not planning to do that uh, today, but um, okay.
so I'm going to um, continue working on the eyes a little bit. Uh, and then after that, uh, I need to work on the mouth, which I still haven't touched since the, the, the beginning of the, of the session. Uh, let us work on the, on the right eye. But just before I do that, I want to put a few, um, a, slight, uh, a few slightly more chromatic accents on the, on the right ear. It is very chromatic, maybe a bit too much. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's actually really good. And a slightly darker one with uh, a bit more of a, a bit more yellow. And this. It's just a little bit too light. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I can go back to the um, to the right eye. I'm going to start with the the tone for the the shadows inside the um, the eye socket. I already have this sort of uh, purple red from from last time so in order to sort of uh, sort of counterbalance this um, i'm going to use a slightly um, a, a color that that tends more towards um, the kind of blue the dark blue It's a little bit too um, too dark. It's a little bit too dark.
not done with the eyes yet, but I want to uh, start working on the mouth a bit more because I still haven't done anything in that area. I want to work a bit more on the on the edge um, around the, the bottom lip. Paint uh, the uh, the highlight on on the bottom lip. Uh, now, I don't want to go for a super chromatic, um, a bright pink. Or uh, I'll go for a pink that has just a little bit of blue in it, so we call pink. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty happy with this. <laughs> now I'm going to paint the, uh, repaint the area just above the upper lip. can keep adding a little bit of um, some, some warmer tones uh, on, on this cheek. I feel it's still very yellow overall.
Stone for the tune. Um, in terms of colours. Maybe I'll, I'll um, work on it again uh, next time, but if not, if you think that I can change it right now, then I should definitely do it now. Um, so I was actually uh, compelled to do um, a few things um, off screen, um, but they were mostly like just kind of details. Um, I sort of refined uh, some things uh, around the neck and the um, the on the the, the cloth, uh, on the hair a little bit, and uh, just a few touches here and there, like on on, on the face. Uh, mostly, I want to wrap up this session by uh, doing a few final things on the on the forehead. Um, the the thing that's not really working with the forehead right now is, um, despite it being very unified, I think. Um, I'm not getting a very strong sense of structure yet. Uh, so let us see whether I could perhaps sort of um, and hence this uh, the main highlight on, on the forehead. Um, Non parlare così forte. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, it's a little bit better. I'm not entirely satisfied yet. There's a chance that I might uh, work on this again uh, during the next the next session. Paint is drying very fast, so it's become a, it's a bit hard to move uh, things around. Yeah, there's a pick ups. Okay. Uh, maybe I can try going for. Um, I can try using a different color for, for the highlight. Use my smaller brush again to work on some of those transitions. Okay, it's a little bit better, but just a little bit. So I probably won't be able to do like um, all that I was hoping to do on the forehead now. I will wait for the, the paint to dry. Um, yeah, it could have been better, but. Okay, the very final, the last thing I'll, I'll do 
is just sort of solidified these, the, the main highlight on the head, which is looking a little bit uh, rough. I will try going for some kind of uh, impact, so. Mm. And I will make it very cold in temperature. Let us see. It might be just a little bit too cold, uh, but hopefully five layers over it next time I can make it work. I think this is working uh, better actually. There's a bit more, a bit more structure. Um, uh, right. So I'm very close to calling it a day. Just having a, a, a last uh, sort of a think to see whether there are any things uh, pending which I should do now. Right, that's a little bit better. That's more interesting. Um, I'm not completely happy about some of those transitions here on the right cheek, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, work on that again next time. Uh, I think also for next time I should um, rectify the, the, the design of the at least the upper lip, uh, which is still a little bit weak. Let's see if I can just uh, effect a few changes, a few last minute changes. It probably won't make such a big difference, but I can try. with uh, some of the modeling uh, just below the, the eye. And that's because I've been using this sort of very representative uh, pattern, like those sort of concentric lines. Um, so if somehow I could break that a little bit. Uh, it's not much, but it's, uh, it's going to help, I think, next time. Mm. One last thing I could do now is a small highlight here. Mm. Ooh. too much, obviously. Not so great, but um, I'll try to um, fix it uh, next time. Okay, one very last, very last thing that I want to do. Um, I would like to clean up some of um, this, this small light shape, which right now it's just a little bit too kind of confusing. It could be unified a bit further. Uh, interesting. Uh, 
Okay, uh, I think I think it's probably a bit too light, but since we're going to be glazing um, a lot uh, next time, I'll be able to kind of uh, knock it down um, a, a little bit. So okay, folks, I think it'll be that'll be it for for, for today. Uh, so next time I will be working with um, some glazing techniques on top of um, what I have, mainly to sort of adjust a few values and uh, uh, and and the colors as well a little bit.